Oh my goodness, Father God. Hi everyone and welcome. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video and I hope you guys stay tuned until the end. My name is Esther Vincent, also known as Leah Mia on social media. Do follow me over there. We'd we'll love to catch you guys up. How have you guys been doing? How is things going on around you? I hope whatever that you guys are doing that is going on good, it's going on well over there. As for me though, I've just got my COVID booster shot today and this arm is very heavy. But other than that, I've got nothing else to complain. I'm healthy, I'm feeling good, and it's been a good day today. Have you guys viewed my previous video that I've just uploaded about a week ago? If no, do give that a view. It is a spooky story. Yep, it is regarding one of our very famous supernatural creature, the Pontianak. Yes, it is regarding its origin, what we can do, its indication, how it looks, and all of that in that video. So at the end of this video, I will have that particular video's card. You guys can click on it or at this video's description box, I'll have that video's link. You guys can click on it and watch it. Thank you. Today, I'm back again with another incident, another issue, another event that had taken place in my country, Malaysia. As for today though, I am going to be talking about a very brutal crime and it's just very sad. This is the brutal case of Noor Suzaili Mokhtar. Noor Suzaili, very sad to say that she is the victim in this crime for today. Noor Suzaili was born on 9th of June 1976 in Kangar Perlis. Perlis is a state of Malaysia all the way at the northern side. You know, it's, it's like basically the border of Malaysia at the northern side as if you pass through Perlis, you can go down to Thailand. And Noor Suzaili, the victim, she at the moment of the crime was working in Kuala Lumpur as a computer engineer. Now Kuala Lumpur is our capital city and it is about 450 to 500 miles away from her birth state, Perlis. Noor Suzaili was the only daughter out of four siblings, including her, so she has three other brothers. Her parents were Mokhtar Ibrahim and Harison Hussein. She was such a loved child being the only daughter of the family, and she was sort of like the hope for the family, and her parents were willing to do anything and everything for her. They even financed her further studies, which she did in the United Kingdom. On the 7th of October in the year 2000, in the early mornings about 7.45 a.m., Noor Suzaili left her home that she was renting in Kampong Baru and she boarded a bus that was headed towards Port Klang. And Port Klang is the final destination of the bus and is also the destination that Noor Suzaili was to get down. She was headed to the first day of her job in Pantai Medical Center, Klang. The last person to see Noor Suzaili alive was her friend and her housemate, Rosmaliza. Noor Suzaili boarded the Express Kiara bus with the registration number of WDE4256. The bus reached the city of Klang at about 8.15 a.m. and almost all the passengers boarded off the bus except for Noor Suzaili and a Bangladeshi citizen. Now, the Bangladeshi guy gets off the bus at a bus stop before the bus reached its final destination, Port Klang. So now the bus is completely empty except for Noor Suzaili as a passenger and the bus driver. Very unfortunately, Noor Suzaili would never reach her new working place that day. The bus driver. Mm -hmm. The damned bus driver. Hanafi Mat Hassan would divert the route of the bus and take the bus on a completely different route to Jalan Bukit Tinggi. Before I go into what actually happens to Noor Suzaili, let me give you guys a little bit backstory about this damned bus driver guy. God, he makes me so mad. So yes, this bus driver guy who is also 
the perpetrator in this case. Hanafi Mat Hassan is his name and he was born in the year 1966. Hanafi is from Kampung Rene, Kota Baru, Kelantan. Kelantan is a different state in Malaysia and he had been married four times mm -hmm, and divorced three times. So at the moment, he was with his fourth wife. Okay, not judging, not judging at all. He was 34 years old at the time of the incident and he was also a former prisoner. During the investigation for this particular case, this crime that he's about to commit, police reports came out showing that he was wanted for a rape case in Mentaka Pahang in the year 1988. I don't know who was the good soul that thought that this guy has changed and gave him a job in this bus company. You know, maybe that particular person just didn't know that this guy has all these criminal charges against him. And to top it off, this was like the 10th day of his job with this bus company. It has just been 10 days that he started working with this bus company and he resorted to crime. During the time of this crime, Hanafi also had few other cases up his sleeve. Yeah, some of those were of breach of trust and also robbery and stuff. Coming back to the day of the incident, so the Bangladeshi guy left the bus. Remember, there were only two passengers in the bus. One was um, Nur Suzaili and the other one was the Bangladeshi guy. So before the bus reached its final destination, Port Klang, the Bangladeshi guy got off the bus at a bus stop. So now Nur Suzaili is the only passenger in the bus with the driver, Hanafi. Taking this as the opportunity of his lifetime, Hanafi diverted the bus out of the normal bus route to just normal roads, residential and construction areas just driving through normal roads. Realizing all this, Nor Suzaili starts to panic and she hurriedly tried to get off the bus using the emergency exit. Unfortunately, Hanafi had already locked all the buses exit and entryways. Then Nor Suzaili resorted to banging and knocking on the bus windows hoping to catch any outsider's attention or you know someone would see unfortunately that effort of hers goes to wane as well as the windows in the bus were thick and they were pretty heavily tinted meaning they were dark so no one from the outside could hear her or see her through the windows at a certain point hanafi had briefly parked the bus in a location very far away to the normal bus's route and a young boy 18 year old a davin was cycling to tuition that morning realizes that this bus is parked in a very unusual location completely off the bus's route so this curious teenager approaches the bus just to see you know what's going on and that's when he sees hanafi with his pants down um sort of wobbling and walking back to the driver's seat. At the same time, A. Davin, the student, also sees a silhouette of a woman that looks almost naked and in a very unmanageable situation as if just gotten attacked or brutally beaten up, frantically knocking on the bus's windows with her hands, sort of like, you know, asking for help. Hanafi realizes A. Davin, this teenager, witnessing all of this, so he chases Davin away and starts up the bus and starts driving the bus away from that area. Now the bus is moving away from the area and Davin, the teenager, just realizes something is completely wrong and starts chasing the bus with his bicycle. Soon after, three other individuals join in Davin to chase that particular bus, namely a motorcyclist, a 50-year-old man, and a driving school instructor. Realizing that he's being followed, Hanafi now increases the bus speed and he just drives recklessly to wherever he can find to escape these people who are following him. And it is said that he was driving towards the Chi Leung Park Circle. Eventually, A. Davin and the other three individuals who were chasing the bus 
would fail to catch it as it speeds away out of their sight. A. Davin, being one of the witnesses later on in this case, would mention that he felt very bad because he only had a bicycle and he could not keep up with the bus. It's sort of like, you know, so near yet so far. Now coming to what actually happened to Noor Suzaili, the victim. The first attack happened when Noor Suzaili realized that the bus had taken a different route. And like I mentioned earlier before, she started frantically shouting and banging on the windows of the bus to get help. So this is when Hanafi goes to Noor Suzaili and starts slapping her and punching her brutally. He later on rips off the headscarf off her head and ties both of Noor Suzaili's arms on top of her. And he also ties uh, the headscarf with her hands to one of the um, chairs in the bus. He went on to brutally raping her and sodomizing Noor Suzaili. With the same headscarf, he proceeded to strangle Noor Suzaili until she eventually died. After committing all these heinous acts, Hanafi just threw Noor Suzaili's lifeless naked body out of the bus close to a construction site near Jalan Bukit Tinggi and just went about his day with the bus as if nothing happened. Noor Suzaili's body was found the same evening naked with the headscarf still around her neck and one of her shoes hanging from her feet. Other than those, none of her belongings or identification was found anywhere near her body. Noor Suzaili's body was then brought to the Tengku Ampunan Rahima Hospital for an autopsy, which later revealed that she was brutally raped, brutally sodomized, punched, and strangled to death. Reports also showed that the disease had suffered 44 shocking injuries to the body, including a broken neck. Hanafi, this dude, was caught three days later at the bus terminal in Port Klang at about 2.45 p.m. This bus terminal in Port Klang was to be Noor Suzaili's get-off point, initially. Oh God, it's just so sad. Hanafi initially denied all these allegations, saying that he knows nothing, that he is not aware of anything of this sort. Yeah, right, Hanafi, we believe you. Knowing that him denying the allegations is not working, he started twisting the stories by saying that Nurse Uzaili was not alone when she boarded the bus, that she was accompanied by a friend. He also mentioned that Noor Suzaili left the bus in a hurry with a friend. He also gave another story saying that he later on borrowed the bus to one of his friends because his friend needed a ride and those kind of stories. However, the persecution presented 16 circumstantial evidences which was solid, strong, and in no doubt. Some of the 16 evidences presented by the persecution were traces of Hanafi's semen inside of Noor Suzaili's uterus and on that particular bus. Suzaili's pendant that was kept by Hanafi inside of a talcum powder box behind one of his house's doors and the serial number of Suzaili's bus ticket. What's the connection of the bus ticket serial number and Hanafi, if you ask? Well, when I read through the reports, it mentioned that each bus driver have their own particular number that they would put inside of the ticket dispatching or ticket depositing uh, machine. So Hanafi had put in his number and all the ticket for that particular day was deposited out of that machine. So this serial number was in connection with Hanafi's number that he put in the machine. I hope it makes sense. So yeah, it was connected where Hanafi's number had connection with the ticket that he had deposited from the ticket machine. And that was the ticket that Noor Suzaili had 
in her purse. There's the small thing that I want to, you know, include here during this raid that the investigators made in Hanafi's house. His fourth wife has just given birth two weeks prior to the incident date. Like, wow, this Hanafi dude, I, I've got no words to say. Like, I just don't want to say anything, but really, your wife has just given birth like two weeks before and you go in this raping crime rampage, like, who are you, man? So these were some of the very strong evidences that was presented to the court by the persecution, which could not be denied by Hanafi. In the midst of all this interrogation, Hanafi had also brought the authorities to where he had disposed or thrown Noor Suzaili's handbags and her belongings. And later on, he pleaded not guilty in court. Like, so you know where her purse was and all of that, but you're not guilty. So what, you were spectating the incident? Like... It just makes me so mad that he had done all this heinous crime and he can be smiling in all the pictures, like... Then came in the eyewitnesses, mainly A. Davin, the teenager, the student who chased the bus, and a few others adding more evidence to the persecution site. The trial took place in the High Court early 2001 with 55 witnesses and decided in 62 days. Finally, the Shah Alam High Court found Hanafi guilty of murder and sentenced him to death by hanging, which should have been taken place on the 26th of April 2006. He also received a 20-year prison sentence and was ordered to receive 12 lashes on his bootay for the rape charges. Hanafi did attempt multiple appeals and spent his final appeal in the federal court on the 12th of December 2006. At the dawn of 19th December 2008, Hanafi died by hanging in the Sungai Buloh prison at the age of 42. His body was taken to the Kajang hospital for autopsy before being handed over to his family for a burial. Poor Noor Suzaili. If I could, I would wanted to be the person who pressed on the button to hang him when the orders were given, said Mukhtar Ibrahim, 63 at that time, the father of Noor Suzaili. This is sad. This is very sad. While doing the research for this video, I saw Noor Suzaili's parents in multiple articles and they were very normal folks, you know, they were very normal folks. They work hard to give their daughter good education and a good life just to be taken away by this type of reckless people for their sexual needs, for their selfish needs, like, like this Hanafi dude. And it's just very unfair, my personal opinion which I think y'all would agree as well, because nobody deserves to die like Noor Suzaili. Nobody. So it's just very unfair for the parents, because when I see the parents, I feel very sad for them. But I just hope Noor Suzaili's soul rests in peace. It also makes me very mad because this Hanafi dude was never remorseful. In all the articles and reports and newspapers, news that I read, it was said that he was never remorseful. He never showed any signs of being remorseful. He was smiling throughout, like in the pictures. So what kind of a person is he? So just disgusts me to the core, but yeah. So that, you guys, is the brutal crime case of Noor Suzaili Mokhtar. If you guys had stayed tuned until this very moment, I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. It would be really, really amazing if you guys could hit on that like button. That would mean so much to me. With all that said and done, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you guys liked it and I will see you guys again on the next video. So stay safe wherever you are and I'll see you again. Bye.